that down. Let's move on to the television screen here for a second, shall we? I think it's next week. Correct me if I'm wrong. Penguin. Penguin. I think next week. Whoa, really? Debuts That's... on HBO Max. I might be off by a little bit. But... September 19th. September oh my gosh, 19th, so That's so exciting. Days. I didn't realize in my head, I'm just, it's always been far off. Yeah, I'm it like, always feels like it's months away, yeah, right? It's going to be like October, November. Eight days <laughs> from today. Eight days a week. Penguin comes out. I, oh, I have been so excited for this show. Colin Farrell. First of all, I think he's a horribly underrated actor, but he so killed that role in the Batman and the trailers and the previews for Penguin. Like it's literally taking a Godfather story and dropping it into the DC universe. I love it. I cannot wait to get sink my teeth into this. I'm so excited for it. And if it's successful, can't wait for season two. But somebody who doesn't sound all that enthusiastic about maybe doing a season two is Colin Farrell. Apparently, <coughs> even though he loves the show, he had a bit of a miserable time making the show, uh, mainly because of the prosthetics. Uh, this comes to us from the folks over at Total Film who wrote this. Colin Farrell said, don't get me wrong. I loved it, but it got in on me a little bit. By the end of it, I was bitching and moaning to anyone who would listen to me that I fucking wanted it to be finished. I tried to remind them that I had a grumpy attitude. I was still grateful and still honored. I grew up watching Burgess Meredith, who played the role in the 1960s TV Batman series, and then Danny DeVito in Tim Burton's 1992 Batman Returns was my penguin. So being a part of the lineage of that storytelling, I really feel privileged. But by the end of it... Uh, he practically turns purple at the memory. It's not like I didn't know who I was and I was going out and burning cars and shit. But if you take what Matt Reeves created and then what Lauren LaFranc, the showrunner, did and what Mike Mariano, prosthetics and makeup designer, did and put them all together, it was a really powerful experience. So he just goes on and says, look, if I could find a way that makes sense, uh, would you talk about it? And I said, absolutely. Maybe in a year I would, but it's finished like I never want to put that fucking suit on again. Uh, I just never want to put it on again. So, and you know, it's funny. We've heard this again recently. Who was it? I think, who was the guy that played Juggernaut? The soccer, the English soccer player turned actor. Uh, oh, Vinny. Yeah, Vin Jones. Mm -hmm. Vinny Jones, right? That Was that his name, Vinny Jones? Yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. so he recently talked about how he didn't want to come back for Deadpool and Wolverine because he didn't want to have to put that, go through the process of putting on that bodysuit. I, I think sometimes we underestimate just how much of a process it is and the hours and hours of sitting there in a chair and like being covered in all this stuff. And, and if you have to do that every single day for like four or five months, I can kind of get, and because especially when you look at Colin Farrell in that suit, he's still unrecognizable. It's completely unrecognizable. So I can only imagine how much time and effort has to go into doing that every single day day and then at the end of the day having to get out of it and all that kind of stuff so i can understand him saying by the end of it i just never wanted to put that suit on again do i think he's serious about not wanting to come back to play in a season two and by the way he never says the words i don't want to come back for season two he just said i don't know man i think if this show is as good as it looks and if it gets the response i think it's gonna get and let's even say get some Emmy attention. Yep. Which, remember, it is an HBO show. They tend to win a lot of Emmys. I, I think we'll see without much problem him getting back in the chair to do it again. And I certainly hope that he does. But I really, look, if you've got the kind of money that Colin Farrell has, I get it you, if you don't want to do that anymore. But I think he will. Chris, you heard him talk about this. I know you primarily have done voice acting. Have you ever had to like go through any sort of makeup stuff in yeah, doing roles and everything? And I have. How painful can, can that be? It's not fun, honestly. Some people are really zen about it and they can be very meditative about it, especially getting your face cast. That is the part that always freaks me out the most when they have to actually mold you and you have 
you know, straws coming out of your nose so you can breathe. Oh. Uh, I only had to do this for an eHarmony commercial. And honestly, mine were just to age me up. And so it was little pieces that they built on throughout the day, including ones on my hands in case I, they, my hands went up in front of the camera. So I would have old lady fingers because I had to go from 25 to I think they aged me up to 95. <laughs> um, it was a weird one. But it, it is it is not a very fun process. And it also is not very kind to your skin. Mm. <laughs> all that glue and all of that. And his are very extensive. You know, we've made the joke so many times on here that he just looks like mean Richard Kind. He just looks like <laughs> yeah. a really angry He does Richard look like kind. Richard Kind. And it is a process. This is going to take hours and hours. Mine, mine of just getting aged up and putting on wigs and all of that stuff took two and a half hours for what ended up being a two minute commercial for Ooh. me going from thing to thing. And that was with two makeup artists on me. My friend Kim, she is an incredible makeup artist who's done a bunch of stuff for, you know, uh, Dr. Strange. She was one of the keys on Multiverse of Madness. All of those prosthetics take hours and it is not a particularly fun experience so i can understand why somebody would say you know this is a lot this is a lot for me to do and then act on top of that and act in a dialect and move around and have all that extra weight that you're carrying and all of that stuff so i get it but i think colin farrell is chasing some awards he is an academy award nominee he has won a golden globe i think he also has that let me get some accolades because to your point I do think people have underestimated him for years. I think he's somebody who's been kind of glossed over and we're seeing this really great kind of renaissance for him. I know people say that a lot about like the Fraser Sons and you know, all those things, the Stone Sons of anytime an actor's doing well, but he really in the last few years has revved up his career to be a very sought after prolific actor. And I feel like this is another show that can cement him as being one to watch. So I think it really comes down to how audiences and critics and award nominations are going to go after season one. That'll determine if he comes back. By the way, there's a movie that he should not only have been nominated, that he, I think he should have won an Academy Award for. It was about 10 years ago. Remember Saving Mr. Banks? Mm -hmm. The problem for him was the two leads of that movie were Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson. So they got, obviously, all the attention but if you haven't seen Saving Mr. Banks and you want to know just, you know, sometimes I ask like people would ask me, hey, if I wanted to see just how good Ryan Reynolds can be as an actor, what should I watch? I say Buried. Go watch Buried. If people were to ask me, if I want to really get a sense of how good of a pure actor Colin Farrell is, I will say watch Saving Mr. Banks. It's a supporting role, but I think he should have won an Academy Award for it. And I think you're right, Chris. I think if the accolades start coming in and emmy whispers start going around about it we could see him signing up for season two pretty quick yeah. we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video better help hey guys it's john here you know as kids we're always learning new things whether it's how to ride a bike play an instrument or even ace that math test but as adults it seems like we lose a bit of that natural curiosity when was the last time you learned something new just for the fun of it like new skills a new language or maybe just how to finally beat your best friend at that game you know therapy can be a fantastic way to reconnect with that sense of wonder it's like going back to school but this time it's for you it's about learning new coping skills setting boundaries and empowering yourself to become the best version of you and the best part it's not just for those who have experienced major trauma it's for anyone looking to grow and learn more about themselves if you've ever thought about starting therapy why not give better help a try it's completely online making it super convenient and flexible to fit into your schedule all you have to do is fill out a quick questionnaire and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist who fits your needs. Plus, if things aren't clicking, you can always switch therapists anytime at no extra cost. So rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash campia today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash campia. Take the first step to being your best self. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? I mean, Colin Farrell is amazing as the Penguin, but he's saying, look, the process to get in this, I think I read somewhere it's like four and a half to five hours a day to, to get into this makeup. Crazy. Do you think he'll be back? Are you looking forward to the series? I personally cannot wait. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campia Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.